Okay, well, welcome everybody. Um, this afternoon I will show you concretely how you can create a mobile app. Mobile app. Uh, this morning I gave um, another talk about our project, our gear, uh, which was more a general presentation of the project. Uh, and before I start coding, uh, let me we show you some slides. Uh, I presume nobody was here this morning. <laughs> there were only two people at my talk. Was very, <laughs> very <laughs> was very early nine at nine on a Saturday. It's, it's a great challenge. But by the way, I'm happy there are a bit more people here. Um, just I will hear um, just a few words about myself. I'm Sebastian Blanc. Um, I work for Red Hat since one year. I have 10 years of experience in IT, mostly in the banking industry, borrowing stuff industry. Uh, but now I moved to, to, to Red Hat to work on a, on a new project, which is called Arrow Gear, uh, based on mobile. Uh, really cool, uh, totally open source and well. Um, before I joined Red Hat, I was very involved in the Groovy and the Grills community. Maybe you know people of it. It's more a project backed up by Spring Source, so it's a big competitor of Red Hat. So it was just to mention that I've done a lot of stuff around Grills and Ruby, around mobile. Um, I'm half French, half Dutch, 100% geek. Uh, Mostly in conferences, I can make a joke about my French accent, but here, since we are in France, I, can, I can't do this joke. So, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you got to hear my Twitter account. I tweet only really, really interesting stuff. <laughs> Not always. Okay, um, that was the agenda of this morning. Uh, I won't cover all of this. I will just explain you the base concepts of Arrow Gear. And mainly, what my talk will be about is this last part of tooling, and especially with support, is I will show you some tools that we provide that will help you, that will enhance your productivity to start a new mobile project. Um, so, here's the French slide. I can translate. What is mobile for our gear? Uh, just to be clear, uh, for us, mobile is not this, it's not the old stuff, not the old phones, uh, not uh, old embarked stuff it's like this. For us, it's more like modern uh, technologies like HTML5, iOS, Android, Cordova, Cordova, which means hybrid applications. And these two are just to make the slide a bit nice, but this one is dead, and this one, I hope we will never support it. <laughs> okay, um, so that's what just I just told. Just one important point for, for who are we providing this project. Uh, basically, where I'm part of Reddit, JBoss, so middleware, Java, GUE. Uh, basically, we are trying to convince uh, people to turn to mobile and it's not so that difficult. So uh, mostly we are dealing with this kind of people. Uh, we report old Java to we nerds. And uh, by providing our project, we hope we can turn them into this kind of guys, really cool guys, actors, which will be able to do some cool mobile projects. Um, Our gear is not a framework, it's not a library which provides CSS or JavaScript to make your site looking uh, looks like nice, like, like Bootstrap, like jQuery Mobile, or like Topcode. We are really, uh, everything which is behind providing all the, the, the stuff you need to, to make your connection between your device and your backend, uh, provides security provides solutions for storing uh, data on your device, uh, providing solutions for um, <coughs> pushing stuff to your device with our unified push server. Um, so basically, that is what our gear is. Uh, and our gear is a project, it's more an umbrella project. We provide libraries 
we provide some backend components like the unified server, the simple bash server, which is an implementation of Mozilla Firefox OS uh, system of pushing to the web. Some security frameworks, some tooling, but mostly what Arrow here is, and that is because we are part of Red Hat uh, JBoss, we are a community. Uh, what did that mean, community? Well, uh, we have a very uh, active mailing list and very active Arrow series. We provide a lot of documentation, uh, of tutorials, of showcase apps. So uh, it's really a chance for you. If you want to turn to mobile, you want to turn your application to mobile, uh, just step into our office, I will say, on the mailing list or IRC. We will help you. We love that. And that's, that's really the strength of this kind of project. Um, and also, we are cross-project implication that means that um, I work here we're not sticking to our own project we are helping Mozilla uh, Foundation on some specification we are helping Cordova uh, we, are, we, we got some committers on the Cordova project uh, so basically we are really open and we try to do to provide best for all of you um, Okay, I want to show you, um, I think it's time that we turn into live coding session. Just before that, let me just introduce you what I mean by tooling. I think, I didn't know that, but you can do that with Google. Okay, uh, so as I said, you, I work here. We provide some libraries to help you building mobile application. But beside that, we also offer some tooling. Uh, we got two kind of tooling. We got tooling on your IDE. It's basically JBoss developers tools, which is just a layer around Eclipse which provides some nice plugins, but you have to love Eclipse to use it. So I won't continue on that. And you got Forge. <coughs> Forge is a utility tool provided by JBot, which helps you to optimize, to accelerate your productivity when you start a new project. It's basically a RAD project. Maybe you don't know what's RAD. RAD is Rapid Application Development. It's a concept that you can find uh, in Wheels. It will be on Wheels project or like Grills. Uh, basically, uh, one of the strengths of this kind of tools is to offer scaffolding. What is scaffolding is you just provide one model to your application imagine i create a book a class called book book with an author a title that's all and then i say okay scaffold for me the application and based on that it will scaffold for you the whole front end with the create page a read page an update page the delete page and it will scaffold for you all the back end so that is a huge winner when you start a new project and you want quickly to, to have some feedback on what you are doing. Um, some concept of RAD. Okay, I won't pronounce these three words in a, in a row because it could be confusing. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, you got KISS. It's uh, keep it simple. This the concept of RAD is keep it simple. And how do you keep it simple? You keep it simple by don't repeating yourself is the drive. Don't repeat yourself. And how do you don't repeat yourself is by uh, adopting convention over convention. And that's a nice, I won't say it, but I guess dry COC <laughs> concepts. Uh, and Forge is trying to adopt that. Uh, convention or 
conf uh, convention over configuration is really a nice thing. It's just based on quite simple conventions, like let's name your attribute like this or like this. Just by doing that, you avoid a lot of boilerplate code. And the system, the system behind, or the framework, if you are using a framework like Rails, will just take care of that. And Forge is using these concepts. Um, though, better than talking, I will try, hoping a bit, that the demo gods will, will, will be on my side, because this morning it was not terrible. But, um, basically I want to show you how this exactly works. Now, let me close all of this. What I'm going to do is start a brand new project, really from scratch, a G2A project. I will provide just one model class, and from that we will generate all the rest endpoints that will provide the complete backend application and I will also scaffold a mobile compliant frontend and we will win it and if it's going not too bad and we have time well I will try to turn it into an hybrid application uh, using Cordoba but I cannot promise you that okay I got a lot of stuff open, I see here. So here I'm using Eclipse. For people, everybody knows a bit what Eclipse is. Uh, quite usual. Yeah, okay. If you, want, you really want to be productive, you have to use IntelliJ. But uh, I have to be a bit corporate, so we're on Eclipse today. Um, Eclipse is bundled with Forge, so that's the red tool I told you about. It's uh, so just a nice plugin that integrates the uh, common line interpreter into Eclipse. Um, and what I'm doing here, uh, I'm in a folder and I just want to create a new project. So um, I will just, I will be doing some copy pasting of the command lines just because I'm very bad in typing in life and I make a lot of C errors. So, first thing we have to do is to create a new project. And to create a new project, I have to go to the right stuff. It's quite obvious. I create, is it, is it big enough? I can try to to increase the, uh, the no. font size, if you want, maybe? Uh, let me look... Font, 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 font... Forge... It's better, no? That's correct. Okay, excellent. Um, okay. What I told here is I want to create a new project and it's named Block App, but we can give it another name. Uh, let's call it uh, Open Source Conference Developer App. Uh, it just asked me, do you want to create it at this location? I say, yes, of course. And at this point, um, you see here on this side a new project has been created completely empty uh, nothing really exciting until here uh, I just have an empty uh, G2E project uh, are you a bit familiar with Java G2E apps? no? <laughs> okay. well basically it's based on, on Maven Maven is a dependency framework which helps you to achieve all the dependency dependencies you need, uh, it compiles the code for you, um, it will do a lot of stuff. But for now we got uh, an empty project, you can see here the source folder is completely empty. So what we want is uh, first add some stuff like saying, okay, I want that my app use some 
persistence uh, framework. So in this case, we will use Hibernate. Hibernate is really famous. Um, ORM is an object relation mapping framework which makes for you a total abstraction between your, your application and the database which is behind. You don't deal with, um, with raw SQL statements and like that. You just deal with objects and it's really useful to use that in G2E apps. So just by typing this line, this line with Forge, I made my application compliant for that. So that is a huge, huge winner because uh, if I didn't do that, I had to implement a lot of XML files, import a lot of libraries, and just Forge, just by saying, I want to use Hibernate, it's, the, it's taking care of all of this. Um, This line is just to say that I want some uh, validation. It's not really relevant for my app, but the interesting part starts here is with the entity command. Entity. Here I say, okay, I have an empty app, but I want to uh, create a new class, a new entity of my model, of my core model, and I want to call it post, for instance. Uh, basically, my app will be an how can I say that? And like a Twitter app or a blog app where I can post uh, news. And it's just called post. So we say, okay, let's create this class. And you can see here, it has created for me. Oh my God, the eclipse is beautiful. Okay. Um, it has created for me just a class called post uh, there are no attributes because i didn't get any attributes i just get an id so it can be persisted uh, in the database um, so what we want of course is uh, some attributes so let's add a field oh. let's add a field that is called title and I want it to be a string. And uh, you can see here, hey, let's create uh, a property title. And it's a private, if you're a bit use, uh, used to Java, it's a private field. And it has created, if I'm correct, some getters and a setter for the title. So that's okay. And the nice thing about this is you get some annotation that like here, a column, just to say, okay, I want this to be persisted in the backend. Um, let's also uh, add some content, because a post, when you make a post, you get the title and you get some content. So let's add the content. Here we get the content. Okay, let's, um, let's create backend uh, business logic. So basically what we want is to generate, based on this class, we want to generate REST endpoints that can be consumed by any uh, client. So basically, that's not the right ID, okay, this one. Here I say, okay, I want to generate some REST stuff. This is just, this is just a setup. And here what I say, this interesting line is just saying West endpoint from entity, just saying based on this post class, I want to generate all the West endpoints for an application. So it will generate, let's just do it and we'll, I will show you the class. It will be, you can see here it has generated a post endpoint. And basically, this class exposes your backend to any clients. Any clients making an, an REST, an HTTP request to your backend uh, pointing to the post uh, URI. Uh, if you do a post query, it, do, it will do a create. If you do a delete, it will do 
well, a delete. Uh, here it's a simple get based on your ID. And here it's a list all is when you just do a get on your post and you want to retrieve all the posts. So as you see, I just copy five lines of codes and what I have now is a complete G2E application. Uh, but what do I need now, of course, is a front-end client. And as this talk is about mobile, um, we are going to generate, to scaffold a client, a mobile client. So Forge has some scaffold facilities. And the nice thing, they have the concept of scaffold providers. That means that you can scaffold an app for mobile, but you can also scaffold an app for uh, Java faces. You can, there's a bunch of technology and uh, by the way, it's open source for it. So if you want to provide your own provider, you can just commit it, propose it and use it. Uh, and we are currently working on a new set of templates which scaffold a mobile app based on top code. Maybe you know top code? Top code is a new project, it's a new, it's, you can compare that to bootstrap responsive. Um, it's a really cool uh, web CSS library which is really mobile compliant. You will see that in a moment. And um, what I will show you is not yet released, it's, we're just playing with it right now. But I, I thought it was really cool to show that in a conference because the result is, is quite nice. So let me just uh, copy paste. What I say here is okay, I want to set up my scaffold. Uh, it will be based on Angular GS plus top codes. Uh, so that's also a nice thing. We are going to generate a whole application written in AngularJS, which is a really cool framework for the front end. Uh, and this is something we don't need. Just let me check. Okay, now the scaffold has been set up and now we are really going to set up, to, to scaffold. So, here I say, okay, I want to scaffold from, and I have to point, I'm sorry, um, sorry, 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 it was a slash. Let me just go back to the root of my project, okay. Okay, here I scaffold from source. I just wonder why I don't have completion here. Just give me a moment because before model. Mm. What are I doing? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, I was a bit too too too. Uh, here and the words. Okay, uh, okay. So what I want to do is scaffold from my main package in Java example of OSBC my, for my model. And I want to scaffold post Java class. And here uh, no description was found. That was the demo effect. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Let me just change that. Uh, no, no, this is my own fault because I made I made a, a convention that your class has to contain a class, uh, a field called description. Otherwise, it won't scaffold. Um, it's quite a stupid convention, um, and I totally forget. So let, 
Let me just change that. You can see that I'm totally not using all the facilities an ID can get to you, but well, uh, wow, well, we don't care. We can just remove that, lay on the edge. Okay. Um, you have to change the parameter. It is called thin finer string content. Th this one. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't think it won't be a problem, but. I can change it. Uh, okay, this will be better. Okay, uh, basically, he, he has scaffold my app now. Uh, if we go to web app folder, and here we go to more less Java uh, stuff, um, we can see that it's created for me all a bunch of GS files uh, based on Angular. It's created in search post controller a new post, an edit, uh, it has created for me some factories, it has created for me, of course, sorry, the total HTML, and, well, you won't believe me until I, I show it to you, so let's deploy that app now into a container. Um, just I say, okay, I want this app to be deployed on a JBoss server. And now I, okay, I'm impressed. It's working. Uh, and here, deploy, okay. Exception, uh, okay, okay, sorry. I have to build a project before that because I was trying to de deploy it, but first, I have to build the project to compile all the stuff because I just generate code until now, but I haven't compiled anything. So I, here I say Maven, clean, clean all the stuff, and then install and install will compile and create a jar, create a war, all the stuff I need. I'm pretty sure that deploying isn't working, though just pretend you're, you weren't seeing what I'm doing. I'm just adding a really useful plugin to my generated app, which will help me to deploy the stuff. Okay, uh, we are mostly there. Okay, uh, let's see if the build was successful. Build success, okay. Um, so now I can really deploy it. I say Maven JBus. For those who do not know, JBus is a, it's a G2E application server where you can deploy Java applications. Uh, it's a really powerful and used in the industry um, uh, application server. Um, and it's open source, it's free to use. Uh, I'm using it here, you can use it tonight if you want to play with it. Here, I, what I just say is Maven GBoss IS deploy deploy the app that I just have created and as you see I haven't and here I got demo gods playing with me of course okay I am non parsable okay I have copy paste like a pig. That should be the problem. Well, pretend we didn't see that. Okay, so basically, it's building a project again and it's deploying it. And it's okay. Uh, I should be able to access it. So, um, Let's go on my local host. 
it's an import 8080 when you are in debug mode and our project was called OS CD 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 yeah CD in your yeah what is it? <laughs> hey look doesn't seem really impressive but that is really mobile compliant and uh, just to show you that let's start a uh, name later is what I show you here Whipple is a Chrome extension really useful if you want to, to test your application online you just install it and anytime you can do enable and what it does basically it just simulate emulate as you were on a mobile so as you see here uh, I'm on an iPhone 5 really cool really hyster uh, I could I could change that to something to Nexus Palm I don't want to try it but yeah you see uh, whatever platform I'm using is top code what I told you about the CC framework will be adapted to any device so basically uh, you can be very confident it will work even on quite all we can try Blackberry even if Blackberry is dead we can, we can try it oh but yeah it's not so nice but <laughs> let's go back to something cool <laughs> let's go back to the iPhone 5 so basically here uh, what I have is posts basically here you could get a list of posts but uh, when I click on this you could have a list of posts but I haven't created any posts yet so what you have here uh, is a create button and here we have the title uh, cool comp viva open source for instance say that and here I have a save button okay and let me go back to the list let me go back to the list and I got an error of course uh, <laughs> let me just let me just go I just go back to plain Just check what is going wrong because that shouldn't go wrong. I got a five one four one five. It's personally a type. <coughs> that's that's special. C'est quand il n'y a pas la, la librairie, il n'a pas trouvé la librairie qui, qui fait la serialisation ou la désserialisation. Et en fait, ça passe à la compilation. Mais après, ça. Il n'a pas trouvé la librairie qui fait la serialisation Ouais, pas souvent, je sais. Ouais, 400 km. Non, apparemment, il y a un mismatch. It's receiving basically the problem is I can show you it's uh, let's do the network let's try it again uh, basically ah non, dans, dans le sens le serveur n'a pas n'a pas compris n'a pas compris, compris, compris le euh, navigateur a envoyé voilà c'est si là basically the server didn't understand uh, okay because I uh, sent an anti payload uh, which should not be the case I showed here I have been uh, sending uh, the content of here I should have here some I cannot edit it um, I'm a bit confused because <laughs> no, t as, t as, t as entité après je pense tu as raison je pense que c'est ça I've been playing with you know you remember I forgot to 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 call my one field description 
and I update it manually. I probably forget something. Uh, let's uh, switch to my uh, <laughs> to my backup app, which is called Tada, which should work. So basically, it's exactly the same thing. It's just a scaffolded app, and this time I'm pretty sure it will work. It will work. Yes, it can. Let's save it. Yeah, it will work. And here you see, I got this working. So I can go back, I got my post. It will work. I can delete it. I can delete it, yes. And it's deleted, and it's not deleted. <laughs> but, oh my god. But yeah, it's Saturday, it's the end of, it's the start of the weekend. But, um, basically, what, what I want to show you here is that it's, um, and I, once again, this scaffold provider I'm showing you is, is quite in development. Uh, we are working on this. But the idea is really, you've seen, I've, I've, I was saying today it's a live coding session, but I didn't code that much. I just enter commands to forge, say, hey, create my app, create my entity, create my fields, create my web backend, create my, back, uh, my front end. And that's all. And imagine when you are starting a new project and that your client is asking, hey, hey, I want to, to, to make a clone of Foursquare and something like that. And I want to see the first result tonight. Well, with this kind of tools, you can really quickly start your mobile project and show something to your clients. Or even for yourself, it's, it's really something cool that you can have something um, visible, something, uh, I don't know what you say. It, uh, in English, uh, you chose the button. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, I, do I, how many? One minute. Wow. Okay. One. Uh, I'm <laughs> the idea was also to show you um, what what here has been generated. This whole folder here is completely independent from the backend. There are no server side generated pages. So this can run as a separate client. And basically what you can do is create one minute will be really short, but let me just show maybe uh, what can I say? I say I want to create a, a Cordova hybrid project cool uh, cool cool uh, .com. cool something like that I think and this cool project that is mainly this tooling is offered also by us it just generates an empty Cordova project and what we can do here uh, is playing. Let me see. It's really hardcore programming. Get all the content of that. Just copy this and pasting it in here. And basically, I'm done here. I got a Cordova project. And Cordova project, I can say, I want to have support for Android, for iOS, for Blackberry, for Windows Phone, for whatever you want. And you don't change your code. Well, this app is really simple. But in this case, you don't have to change anything. You just have to add platforms to it. And you say, Cordova, build my app. And it will create a package for iOS, for Android, for Windows Phones. And you can post that to all your stores and you can become very rich in one day, or in some minutes, like today. And now I see a sign of stop. Um, so just to, in conclusion, that's some, just one little part of the Arrow Gear project. We have also some quite nice tooling for pushing stuff, adding push to your application, though that was part of my demo, but I didn't have time, was to add some stuff. If you send a new post, everybody which is using the same app on Android, on iOS, whatever, will receive a nice notification, hey, a new post has been added. 
and with Aero Gear and the Unified Server Push, you can do that really easily. You don't have to deal with all the different networks of, of the Google network, of the Apple network. We take care of that. You just send one message to one server and we take care of sending that everywhere. And again, it's open source, it's free to use. You just have to download the code, you can participate, uh, you can help us, uh, you can play with us, you can ask us questions. It's really cool stuff. And I think that's it. So if you have any questions, it's the time to ask questions. No questions? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this stuff. Yes. I'm yeah, nice. yeah. 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 Um, That's my email address. <laughs> <laughs> I have some gifts containing that. Uh, I should have uh, the presentation, but uh, that's a good question. Uh, really detailed at this level. I don't think we have a dust of it, but um, if you want to pay it, I can just send it to you. Maybe you have a getting started page. No. We get a, we get a getting started pages on on how to use our libraries, but not so much about what I just showed you. That scaffolding tooling part is still a bit in progress, but <laughs> <laughs> but I can send it to you by email if you want. You, you can okay. just also send me the or the command line, and then we create the text file on the okay, side. Okay, yeah, good idea. Like I will do that. Of course, it would be easier. I will attach the um, with my. Uh, I will create a next slide for my presentation to that. And you will, you, presentation, by the way, is just an uh, HTML5 presentation, though. Um, this stuff. I, it's now running locally, but I will push it tonight, though everyone can access it. Uh, and so you can see all the funny slides I didn't show you. Thank you everyone and Thank you. have a nice weekend. <laughs>